Okay, going to salons, um, and I just remember every salon experience I had um, being quite negative, <laughs> and uh, some of them stuck with me for quite a while. And that's one of the reasons that I became a hairstylist because I wanted to make sure that when little girls and boys with curly hair came to sit in my chair, that they felt comfortable in their own skin. Um, because I don't think it's fair to turn anyone away for race. Black hair artists in Eugene believe their work means more than just a simple cut and color. Last summer, Gatson and her co-workers Cassie Chambers and Amber Hernandez created a collective called Happy also known as Hair Artists in Pursuit of Inclusion. They started the collective to promote change in the beauty standards of hair, specifically black hair. But see how I'm just watching the shape as I go around. Uh, or the murder of George Floyd is kind of what sparked all of um, the conversation and we realized um, very quickly that we were on the same side of things. And so we just started talking about you know, kind of the change that we needed to see um, how we could be the most effective um, in our industry and in our community. Their collective, Happy, teaches other salon professionals around Oregon how to cut and style black hair. Happy also holds conversations around the historical context of black hair. Hair, you get these results because this is beautiful to me. There's no reason that this can't be accepted. Um, and a goal of one of our classes is to really um, provide the information needed to empathize with Black people and their hair journey along the way. Uh, so we go into a lot about um, Black history and Black culture around hair. And we talk about um, appropriation early African civilization, hair was pretty much everything to them. Um, it's how they recognize whose family you were from. I think after our first class, we're like, wow, this actually really has a lot to do with history and culture and verbiage really before you can even get into um, the other aspects. Like you really have to understand, appreciate and support before right yeah. like that's the purpose of this so that everybody here is just that much more informed and then can ask even more questions things that people don't realize like even words like the words that you use to describe somebody's hair those words don't have the same feeling towards them that they would to somebody else for these three stylists and moms, the perception of black hair has a deep rooted meaning for them, mainly because black hair has always been rooted in white European beauty standards. These standards focus on straightening hair to fit into a wider society. Some products that have affected these standards over time are hot combs. They were invented in 1920 by Annie Malone, used on stove tops to heat up and straighten black hair. Now, flat irons have a heat control capability and are also connected to a powered heat source. Relaxers, a chemical treatment placed on black hair to make it more straight, has now turned into a smoothing treatment that removes frizz and damage called a Brazilian blowout. These techniques have never left. They have just evolved. Even for myself, being a half black, half white woman, I was raised going to salons at an early age where my hair was flat ironed, ruining the curl pattern, cut and styled. When that technique was applied, it wouldn't allow me to learn how to style my own hair. And it has also taken me 19 years to do so. Unfortunately, this technique still goes on today, preventing curly haired people and kids from learning their hair. Cool. How old is he? He's eight. What is unfortunate is that when we do talk about black hair, we are talking about it in a sense of how can we make it more white, right? So when we talk about cutting black hair, we talk about needing to flat iron it or straighten it out first before we approach it, um, which is absurd. 
Although the collective is fairly new, they are hungry for change and have huge goals, specifically with the Oregon Board of Cosmetology. In 2013, the Oregon legislator adopted HB 3409, making natural hair care for those with curls and not straight hair a field of practice, and separate from hair design such as trimming and hair coloring. Overall, natural hair care has an extremely limited scope of practice, with only learning braids, weaves, and twists. It also requires the individual to study a training module and take a written examination. Happy wants to change that, making the natural hair care license a mandatory part of hair professionals' training to have overall more inclusive stylists within Oregon. Luckily, we live in a state that is pretty progressive and forward thinking, but I think, I think our, our chances are pretty good. (laughs) So we just have to stay on it. But, um, I, I know personally, some of the people that sit on the board for, uh, writing the tests and all of that, and they're pretty old and pretty white. (laughs) So it's, you know, it's going to take, it's going to take some work, but I'm, I'm hopeful. Happy hopes to bring hair inclusivity to Oregon, but they simply hope to make any person of color's experience a lot better the next time they sit in a salon chair. My hope for these classes is that there will be multiple stylists in any given community who can just be of service. I think about it like when you're sick, you go to the doctor for answers. The idea that you would be sick and go to the doctor and he would say, sorry, I can't help you because of your skin color so I can help you because of your hair texture like what that is just so asinine to me and so as hairstylists I feel like that is our responsibility I don't want to see any more any more kids growing up feeling like they are othered because of their hair I want them to know how beautiful their hair is I want them to know how beautiful they are and I want them to radiate that because their stylist told them so